Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So uh, here are a few of the questions which I interview expects any fresher or someone who has done an internship to know all these things. Okay, we already studied all these things in uh, building materials uh, subjects, but still we'll try to understand this. So here we have a pad footing. Pad footing is also called as isolated footing. Okay, a um, few people call it as plain footing also. Then we have a step footing and then we have a slow footing. So if you refer the textbooks, you get answers like shallow foundations and deep foundation. Under the shallow foundations, you get like simple footing, slope, step. And under the deep foundation, you get uh, pile foundation, you get uh, uh, well foundation and all other foundation. So that explanation is not required. Whatever explanation I give, uh, you can uh, remember this, okay? Now in all the three footing, one thing is common. There's only one footing below. And over that we have a column, or I can say there's a footing below and over that I have a single column. So it's called as isolated footing. Only one column will be there. Okay, great. Now, the next is that here, what happens only a normal foot, a kind of a footing is there, isn't it? But whereas in slope footing, what has happened? You are given this and over that you have made a kind of a slope, right? So made a kind of a slope here. So this is called a slope footing. You can see it here also. So this much is a straight portion. This is your straight portion. Then this is a slope footing okay people call this as a trapeze uh, yeah this is a, a, a slope footing and then we have a step footing in the step footing what happens you have this first step then your second step and then you have third step got it so these are three uh, general type of footing usually you see in a small residential building and all so always your simple footing or a pad footing is the best footing what we can design uh, slow footing people try to give slow footing and step footing from uh, saving the concrete but uh, practically they are not a good footing that has to be given, okay? And even in the slope footing is not a good footing because the load transfer will not happen properly here. Because like I told in one of my course, what happens when you see here, I can do it anything, but practically when you do the execution, you can see you have to cast this in two layers. That means first is will be a, this, uh, a kind of a, what you call rectangular or square portion. That is this portion you are going to cast first, where it is this one this portion you're going to cast first and after some time what you do you try to give this sloping arrangement you try to give a kind of a sloping arrangement in in this way so that will take some time or let us say after half an hour or maybe after 25 minutes you try or let after half an hour you try to make this kind of a slope right and here what will happen you should have a uh, very a stiff concrete if you're having a concrete which is more workable you cannot maintain that shape right so now what happens so now we want footing to act as a one single unit. When the load comes from the column, it gets transferred to the footing. The footing has to take the soil, uh, sorry, the footing has to take the load and transfer it to the soil. So it will act as a one unit. But here what has happened, since we are giving this uh, arrangement and we are doing the casting in two layers, first layer and second layer, this will not act as a monolithic unit. That means when the load comes from here, it will transfer here. But from here to here, the transfer will not happen correctly. So this is not a right footing to be given, but most of people practice this since it's the old practice what people have been practicing it. In the same way, step footing also same thing. Uh, in a step footing, this is a three step footing. Sometimes we give only two step, like you can see it here. Yeah, this is three step. Sometimes what we do, we give two step. I'll do it here, two step footing. In this, what we do, this, is your first, this will be your first step. And then you're going to give your uh, second step in this way. Okay, this will be your second step. So it is called as step footing. Again, in the step footing also, it's the same problem. When you do the step footing, you do the first step. This is your first one. That is your base. After that, you wait for some time and then you cast your second. Again, what will happen? That monolithic, act, monolithic action will not happen. So transfer is not going to happen. So always go for this. Now, again, all this explanation need not be explained in the interview. If they ask, just tell simple footing, slow footing, step footing, enough. And then if you ask further questions, like which is good, which is not good and all, you can do, give this explanation. Otherwise, not required. But from your knowledge point of view, because once you get job, it's not the end of the world, right? You need to keep on uh, what you call upgrading your knowledge and all. So that is why I'm explaining you all these things because no one is going to tell you even if you work on the site. Yeah. So after that, uh, we have this uh, mat foundation, mat foundation and draft foundation, both are one and the same. Here, what happens in one foundation, you have multiple number of columns. Yeah. So there's some problem with the internet. I will not uh, retake. There's some problem with the internet. I'll not retake this video again. I'll continue from here, okay? This is the fourth time I'm trying to do. And you have to try to adjust with that. Yeah. So uh, in the mat foundation, what happens? You have a 
multiple number of columns, but there is one base that is one foundation. So it is called as mat or rough foundation. Next, we have eccentrically loaded column footing. Okay, so what is this eccentrically loaded column? Here you can see this is my footing, and exactly at the center of the footing, I have my column, right? That is the CG of your column, and the CG of your footing is matching. But whereas here you have a footing, but the column which you are going to keep, it is not exactly at the CG of a footing. It's somewhere at the uh, what you call it, the outer uh, part, isn't it? Somewhere in the corner. It can be here. It can be here also. So it is called as eccentrically loaded column. So when we have such eccentrically loaded column, we try to connect uh, that with the help of a beam, so that whatever additional moment you are getting here, unbalanced moment, that will be taken care by this beam. Okay. Uh, it's like supporting. Let us say uh, you are limping. Okay. Or let us say you are a kind of a handicap. Then what you do for the support? You have a stick with you. Let us say, or you hold someone's hand and you go. So the hand, what you hold to him, it's like a beam. Okay, it will give you a support. And whatever uh, load, imbalance load, what you are getting, you are transferring it to your uh, what you call a friends or someone uh, who whom you are holding, isn't it? It's the same thing. This, let us say this is a kind of a handicap uh, person, and this person is a right person. I mean, he's a normal person. So whatever unbalanced moment you are getting, you are trying to transfer that with the help of this beam. And it will be get. I mean, it will transfer to this particular column in the same way. When you hold your when you hold your friend's hand, uh, so this uh, hand, whatever you are holding, it act like a strap beam for you. So this is a practical. I mean, this is a, a real scenario, and this is what you mean by eccentric. So it is called as eccentrically. When you say concentrically, concentric is exactly at the center. Eccentric in the sense somewhere at the extreme end, somewhere. It is called as eccentric column, okay, or eccentric footing. So now practical, you see, this is slope footing. What I was trying to tell. You can see first this one will be cast in. After some time, you are going to make a shape something like this. So this is not a good footing to be done. But most of the people practice. Same thing you can see it here. Slow footing, and then you have step footing. You can see this is my first step. Then I did second step. Then I did the third step. Got it? So that is uh, that is how I am uh, showing you all this picture practically. And then we have combined footing. Now what is combined footing? And one single footing. If there are two columns, then we call it as a combined footing. Okay. So you can see it here. This is my footing, isn't it? And on this footing, I have more than two columns or two columns. Let us say there's one column here, there's one column here, or let us say more than one column. If on any footing, if there is more than one column, we call it as a combined footing. You can see here. Similarly, you can see it here. This is my bottom reinforcement, top reinforcement. I've given one column and two column. You can see it here. Form work we have arranged two columns. So this is called as combined footing. Okay. Yeah. And practically, whatever I explained for this, no, you can see it here, no. See, this was one column which is at the extreme center. I mean, at the extreme corner, and this is a, another footing which where the column is exactly at the center. This is a strap beam what I have given. So whatever unbalanced moment we have, it will get transferred through this beam and it will be transferred to this. Got it? So this is how the practical these things are. So and this is your mat foundation. You can see here a big foundation they have done. Over that you can see one, two, three, four, five. A lot of columns are there. Same thing. A mat foundation. Over that one, two, multiple columns are there. Okay. So this is a this is how practically your mat foundation or raft foundation looks. Very simple. All the explanation I have given. More explanation is not required. Only from your knowledge point of view, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Simple footing we have in that we have step footing and we have a slope footing. Then we have combined footing. Where you have more than one column, we call it as combined footing. Where there are multiple number of columns, okay, then we call uh, it as a raft foundation. And then, if you want to explain about eccentric column, you can explain about the eccentric column, not column, eccentric foundation. This is enough, right? So uh, we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.